everybody, welcome back to another Paint Night Live. My name is Emma Panuski, and tonight we're gonna be painting patterns and posies. So tonight in the studio, Dylan Estes is with us. He's gonna be moderating the comment section, uh, answering all your questions, and uh, talking to you guys throughout our live stream. So if you wanna let us know anything, or if you have a question about the painting, then please feel free to list it in the comment section below. We'd love to hear what you have to say. Uh, so if you are new to our Paint Night Lives, welcome. We do um, one every Monday night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time right here on Facebook and YouTube where we teach you how to paint a painting in just about an hour. And a really neat thing about our Paint Night Lives is that we have a really spectacular kit of paints and brushes to go along with this really awesome program. It's a wide variety of two ounce bottles of folk art acrylic paint and a 10 piece artist variety brush set. So once you go ahead and pick up that paint kit, then you um, can paint along with all of our different paint night lives. Uh, and we have tons of free online education for you guys to look through. Um, and every lesson we teach you how to paint, whether it be a landscape or a floral arrangement or a different animal, something like that. They're all really unique um, and you always learn a lot of great techniques. And once you have that kit, then you'll be ready to paint along with us for each lesson. So uh, I'm pretty sure Dylan listed that. So if you want to look to find our Let's Paint Live kit, it's going to be um, right down there for you to find it. But I think we're ready to get started. What do you think, Dylan? Yeah, we've got a few people joining. Let us know where you are watching from, and we're going to go ahead and get started here. Yeah, awesome. So as you can see tonight, we have a really loose, fun, abstract painting. Um, and one of the things I just wanted to say right off the bat is that the great thing about this painting is that it's so loose and abstract. Um, you know, like in the name, we call it Patterns and Posies because you can really make this unique to uh, what, how you want to create it. So if you want to, you know, rearrange the shapes or the colors, I um, really recommend that you do so and make it fit your personal preference. That's one, really one of the great things about this painting is that it's totally customizable. So I encourage you to just have fun, relax. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just play around with it and paint what you're feeling. So we have our really great Folk Art Let's Paint Live kit, but I did want to call out, this is a fairly new product that Plaid makes. It is our Apple Barrel Multi-Surface Paint Pens. Just like in the name, they're multi-surface, so they work on a variety of things like metal, terracotta, ceramic, glass, canvas, paper, you name it. Um, these work really well on that. But one of the really special things that you don't find in a lot of other multi-use, or I'm sorry, multi-surface paint pens, is that they're non-toxic. So you don't get that um, like oily, toxic smell. You don't have to open a window. There's no aroma to them. They're totally non-toxic, so it's really Really great for crafters of all ages and we're gonna use our multi-surface paint pens in our painting tonight so I'm really excited about that so once you have your Apple Barrel multi-surface paint pens the other things you're gonna want to have are a 16 by 20 stretched canvas but kind of like we talked about in the beginning any size canvas will work that's the beauty of this painting tonight so if you don't have a 16 by 20 whatever stretched canvas you're painting with tonight I'm sure will work just as great and then we have our Folk Art Let's Paint Live kit. And the specific colors from that kit that we're gonna be using tonight are daffodil yellow, apple red, bright pink, classic green, Dutch aqua, wicker white, and baby pink. So if you guys are ready at home, I am ready to get started. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna load a little bit of our baby pink onto our palette. So uh, for this in particular, I am looking for like two parts baby pink to one part daffodil yellow. And this combination of colors is going to create that really pretty peachy color in our, in our canvas background. So just mix it really well until it's really well incorporated. you end up with a color that's like a little bit of a soft apricot mango-y color kind of peachy whatever other citrus fruit you want to compare it to 
Okay, so um, to create this really soft blended background, we're gonna do kind of like a slip slap technique and I'll show you what I mean. So it's almost like our paintbrush is a pendulum and we're, you know, touching down onto our canvas, but then we're lifting up and then we're coming back down. And then when we come this way, we're lifting up and that's going to create that really loose brush stroke effect where the end of our paint stroke just kind of fades out almost. So I'll show you what I mean. So if I were to just paint on just touching the whole time, I'm going to end up with these really sharp lines. But if I do that kind of slip slap pendulum where my brush comes off the canvas at each end, we end up with a looser brush stroke effect. Are you able to tell that difference? Yeah. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. And that's a technique that you're gonna wanna take into our whole background for tonight. So I'm just kind of feeling it. I wanna have a big patch of peach over here I'm gonna bring it up a little bit. That's all right. I have another pack. Okay, so we're creating some soft peach in this area. I'm kind of bring it up a little bit here. I'm gonna start in my top left corner. But again, I want you guys to have fun with this at home. So I want you to paint whatever feels right. If you don't want these colors to be in the specific areas that I encourage you to paint them in, then feel free to switch it up. If you want this section to be down here or whatever, feel free. Okay. I'll bring a little bit here and I am just going kind of vertically um, just because as you see when you go vertically you get those really soft or kind of brush strokey ends um, but you don't have to go vertically you can go horizontally and that's what that would look like just a choice that you can make Okay, so I'm not even gonna rinse my brush yet. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a paper towel and I'm just gonna remove as much of the paint from my brush as I can. And then the next color I'm gonna load to my palette is some more baby pink, but this time we're not mixing. We're just having our baby pink. Okay, so just continuing with that same technique. Filling in our canvas. Little area right here. It's okay if your colors get a little blended. I think that looks pretty. Um, if you wanna dry your sections in between, feel free to do that. But since we're working with some really, uh, some colors that coordinate really well together, I don't really think there's a need to dry in between. I kinda like how the colors blend together. But one thing that we want to keep in mind, right now we're only working with pink and orange, which look really good blended together. But once we get into some cooler colors, um, then we're going to be a little bit more mindful about which colors blend together and which colors don't. Okay, I'm just gonna remove as much paint from my brush again as I can. Just taking a paper towel and squeezing the bristles. Next, we're gonna add some daffodil yellow.
Again, yellow uh, looks really well, looks really good when it's blended into orange and pink. So we're still not concerned about these colors looking muddy when they're next to each other. We got Jesse and Donna Dewberry in the chat. Hey, Jesse and Donna. Thanks for watching. Also, hello to our regulars, Paula, Mary, Lynn. Thanks for joining us. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching. Okay, now I'm going to rinse my brush. I'm going to dry my brush and I'm working with a three quarter inch flat brush, just a large flat brush that you have. Next I'm going to introduce some Dutch Aqua to my palette. Okay, so one thing about Dutch Aqua, it's a really beautiful soft blue color. It looks really good with uh, blended with yellow. It creates kind of a more tealy color. It looks good blended with the pink. We get a little soft purpley hue. But one thing that we're gonna avoid is um, blending it in with our peach color because blue and orange, um, those colors don't blend well together because they're opposites on the color wheel. So I'm going to mindfully avoid my orange when I'm incorporating my Dutch Aqua. Oh, we got Chris here too. Hey, Chris. We got a full plaid crew. When we do get close to the orange, I'm not slip slapping, I'm just going in one direction. That'll help avoid blending into the orange. Okay, I'm gonna rinse my brush. And then lastly, for a very loose, soft background, I'm gonna introduce some of our wicker white onto the palette. And continuing with the same techniques as before, So you'll see that our paints are blending together, the paints on the palette with our wicker white, and that's because the uh, coat underneath is not yet dry. So I like this blended look when the wicker white is kind of blending with those colors underneath, but if that's not your favorite, then what you can do to avoid that is to just take a blow dryer or a heat gun and dry your coats in between before you add your wicker white. Oops. Okay. 
Okay. So I'm pretty happy with this background. I think it's really pretty, it's loose, it's fun. I'm gonna rinse my brush. And I think I forgot to bring a blow dryer with me. Okay, we'll make sure we get you one. So if you're just now tuning in, um, we're taking a little break. We are painting Patterns and Posies, which is our paint night live that we're really excited to show you how to paint tonight. Um, we are using our Folk Art Let's Paint Live kit, as well as our new Apple Barrel multi-surface paint pen. So a really fun duo um, that creates a really cool abstract painting. Thanks, Dylan. Okay. Dylan was so gracious to bring me a blow dryer. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna lock this in place. We're gonna blow dry it so that it's nice and dry, ready for our next step. Okay, we're pretty dry, so we're ready to move on. Okay, so... The next paint that I'm gonna add to my palette is some Apple Red, which is a really beautiful, bright red color. I'm gonna take a smaller size flat brush. I'm using a number 12 flat brush and we're gonna to start to create some of these circles or our posies that you can see here. And when I'm thinking about making um, an even circle shape, I'm thinking about symmetry. So whatever I do on one half, I want to um, re totally mirror on the other half. So if I make a stroke like that, I like to pause in between, I like to start at the top again and just totally mirror that stroke so that we get a really nice circle. And then I'm just gonna take my three quarter inch flat brush and fill it in. Like that. So that's gonna be my biggest circle. So now thinking about the smaller circles, just practicing that same thing. Bring our brush down, start at the top again and mirror that stroke, and then fill. Boop. And boop. Like that. So while we still have some red on our brush, oh, I forgot one circle. So in our final painting, I have kind of like a circle that's pretty big. And so we only see about a quarter of it coming in from the corner. And I'm just gonna do one swooping stroke like that. And then fill that in with some more apple red.
Okay, so next we are going to paint a heart onto our canvas. So if you're a little nervous about this next step, I don't want you to be, but feel free to use a piece of chalk or a pencil to sketch out your heart shape um, if you feel more comfortable doing that. But I'm gonna show you guys how to paint it directly onto your canvas. So it's a little bit like doing a circle, but we're starting, we're thinking about symmetry again. I'm starting um, where like this portion of my heart would be. So kind of the inner top center. I have a flat brush and I have it um, perpendicular to my canvas. I have a little swoop here and then I'm just bringing it down like that. So I have a little curve at the top and then bringing it down like that. Clean that up a little bit. We end up with a really perfect part. Okay, so we have a couple of little dash marks going on with our red, so I'm gonna continue those, or I guess start those. And um, I'm just, you know, following the width of my three quarter inch, or I'm sorry, my uh, number 12 flat brush. So I'm just making little dash marks that are just as wide as my brush. And I'm just kind of going in like a step stone pattern, just randomly where I want it to live on my canvas, like that, okay? So that's a red, so I'm gonna go ahead and rinse my brush. And next, I'm gonna load my brush with some of that Dutch Aqua. I still have some on my palette. And since we're so good at making those little dash marks now, I'm gonna make some more over here. Again, just the width of my brush. If you wanna have fun with it, feel free to make these little marks wider or thinner. Um, totally up to you. That could add a lot of fun interest into your painting. I'm gonna make another little heart, same way as we did before. Fill it in. Okay, so now I'm gonna make these really loose circles. So it's gonna be a little bit different than how we would normally create our, like a perfect circle. So instead of starting from the top middle and swooping down to create one half, I'm gonna start from where I want the center of my circle to be. And I'm just kind of creating, I'm swirling my brush around. So you're probably thinking, Emma, that's pretty perfect looking. But when we get to the outer diet, or I guess circumference of our circle, we're letting our brush run out of paint and we're just getting a little bit looser. And as our brush runs out of paint, we're gonna see some little loose swirly parts and we're gonna have a more um, loose, abstract looking circle. So we're trying to let that brush run out of paint so that when we get to the edge, we have that really loose edge of our circle. You'll have one kind of coming off here, like that. Okay, I'm gonna rinse my brush again. We have some baby pink on our palette and we have a couple of hearts using our baby pink. So I'm gonna pick that up with my brush. But again, if you're just now joining us, 
In the beginning, I recommended that you can use whatever colors for whatever shapes that you wanted to create on your canvas. So if you want these pink hearts to be blue or if you want uh, those blue loose circles to be pink, then I please feel free to switch it up and just do whatever you prefer the best. That's the great thing about uh, painting so abstract like this is that you get to have a lot of fun and make um, some artistic choices that can be a little bit more challenging to make um, if you were doing like a, a less loose painting, if that makes sense. Tonight can be all about artistic choices, but if you're tired of making choices and you just want to turn your brain off and paint, then I invite you to do that as well. We'll have a heart there, and I want to have a heart here. Okay, that's the end of our baby pink, so I'm gonna rinse my brush. And now, we're introducing a new color to our palette. I'm gonna add some bright pink to my palette. And with this pink, and again, we are still working with this number 12 flat. It is uh, getting a lot of use, this painting, my number 12 flat. We're gonna create these little arches that you see, kind of giving the appearance of a cute little rainbow. So, if you want to kind of mark the edge of where you want your arches to be, feel free to do that. Sometimes I like to do that just so I can kind of picture um, where I'm going to guide my brush in my head. So that's going to be the outward center of our arch. So starting, uh, you know, about a half inch away from that on the edge of our canvas, I'm going to make a straight line swoop to meet that in the middle and then come back up. like this. Since we already have the shape down, I'm going to make another arch a little bit. I'm giving a little space on the outside of that arch, following the same direction. We had a good suggestion. You could, um, they love the background. You could do in fall colors and add maple leaves and pumpkins. I love that idea. That is really cute. It's a great idea. Yeah, this is a really nice little versatile background. Um, it's fun, it's easy, it's quick, as you guys can see. Um, you can take this, you know, background technique into a lot of your paintings. Okay, again, we're gonna do a couple little dash marks with our bright pink here. I have one kind of rogue loose circle here. And then I have another heart down here. And I have actually another heart up here. Okay, so that's our bright pink. I'm gonna rinse my brush. And then the last, oh, I'm sorry, not quite. We have a couple of wicker white circles that I wanna add to our canvas. So wherever you think your canvas needs a touch of white, we're gonna make some, the smallest circles yet. 
And these can be loose like the blue ones if you want, or they can be a little bit more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A little bit cleaner looking like the red ones that we created in the beginning. Totally up to you. But we're just trying to fill up the space of our canvas, add some exciting things to look at. So just take a step back, look at your canvas and see what you need to add to. See, see where you could uh, afford to create a little bit more patterns and shapes. Okay, now I'm gonna rinse, actually, no, I'm not gonna rinse my brush. I'm gonna uh, keep that white on my brush and I'm gonna introduce some classic green to my palette. So for this one, I'm looking for like a two to one ratio of classic green to wicker white. So it's all right that we still have some of that white on our brush because we're gonna mix some white next. Okay, we, I just wanted to lighten this green color a little bit. Just a preference. I thought it um, worked well in the comp, worked better in the composition of our painting if it was a little bit lighter. That's all. Okay. Again, we have some of those little marks with our green. We have some circles up here. And then, of course, we have um, some green leaves. So I'm kind of making like a little comma stroke like this onto my canvas. And then again, I'm just gonna mirror that little comma stroke on the bottom. And that's how I create a really simple leaf shape. So boop, boop, like that. Boop, boop, fill in. And wherever you want some leaves to live. So I was thinking in my head that these larger red circles are kind of like our posies. So I was thinking those are our flowers, which would look good with the addition of some leaves. But truly, you can add leaves wherever you want. Okay, I think we're all done with our painting tonight. So I'm gonna rinse my brush before we start to use our Apple Barrel multi-surface paint pens. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and bl uh, blow dry all of my paint so that it's nice and dry for our next step. Okay, now for the exciting part, we're gonna break out our Apple Barrel paint pens. So this is a fresh new pack. We have two really great kinds of Apple Barrel paint pens. We have a basic set, 
um, and we also have a fun bright neon set. They're both 12 pieces. They come with a variety of different colors, but tonight I called out the basic set, which is what we're going to be using. Okay. So they are very simple to use. You use them a lot like you would use um, some, probably some other paint pens that you've worked with before. So you take the cap off. So these are brand new. So I have just a paper towel here. You can use a scrap piece of paper, whatever you have on hand. And we're gonna pump the pen, which just means I'm, you know, holding the tip down on my surface and I'm just pumping it up and down so that the ink can start, or I guess the paint really, can flow to the tip of my pen until uh, it looks like the tip is, you know, colored. Okay, so now is the fun part. We get to totally let loose and doodle a little bit and just add some interest into our painting. So I have my black out right now and just noticing what I, um, you know, incorporated black in in my original design, um, I have it for the centers of my posies, so just kind of like a little uh, star print in all of my red circles, like that. I have a little mini heart in the center of my baby pink heart, totally filled in, and then around that, and then some just little fun, loose dash marks. like that. Kind of a layering of hearts in this one. Just following the original shape that we laid out with our paint in the beginning. Then, got a little bit going on here. Don't forget add to the red heart over here like that okay I'm gonna put the cap on my black for now okay now I'm gonna take out my white paint pen same thing with the black we want to pump that paint into the tip of our pen until we see the paint fill the tip There we go. Okay, so we're taking the white to make kind of little comma strokes to our posies here. That's kind of acting as like petals, which is a really cute, just kind of loose way to add some interest into our posies. So I'm gonna do that to all of these guys. Just like little C strokes like that. I went ahead and outlined my green leaves. We did some white circles in our blue circles here. Created some little zigzag doodles with some of our little dash marks. Some dots. is really one of my favorite things about our new apple barrel paint pens is that they really do work so well uh, layering and being combined with our apple barrel and folk art paints 
ever since we launched these pants, we have had a lot of fun with them in the studio. Kind of creating some detail in our arches. Okay, I'm gonna put my white down for now. Okay, now I'm gonna put my white down and I'm gonna take this bright blue color from my pack. And this one's new too, so I'm gonna pop my tip. Shake a little bit with the ink first or the paint. Take my blue color and fill in some more of my shapes. I created some little marks with these in the top corner here. done you guys so the last thing that we have to do is of course sign your painting now that you have these apple barrel paint pens it's a lot easier to sign your paintings so there's no excuse not to I'm gonna sign this here um, and we are done so I really hope that you guys enjoyed following along with our paint night tonight. I just want to remind you guys that we are here every Monday night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time on Facebook and YouTube. So make sure to tune in next Monday or again, we will teach you how to paint a painting in just about an hour. Um, don't forget to check out our Let's Paint Live kit. It's a really great kit. Um, it has a ton of a really great stuff in it, a large variety of folk art acrylic paint, and that 10-piece artist variety brush set. And it's really invaluable because once you pick it up, you can go through our whole Let's Paint gallery and choose a painting to work on next. So again, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, we really appreciate